fucking cover! Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are trying a different approach to a build. I get requested quite a bit to build things, which should be no surprise as this is YouTube. I am a maker and I build lots of random stuff. Roughly 30 to 40 requests per week of different items for the past five and a half, six years now or so. And it definitely compiles and just kind of stacks up to the point where there's no way I could possibly get all these requests in. So I kind of had this idea of maybe trying to mash up requests. You've seen me mash up things like the Viking Link and the Knights Templar Iron Man. And some of you really enjoyed those builds and I thought, why not do that with just a one-off prop? So today I'm going to hopefully fit the needs of several. Uh, I get requested quite a bit to make some military things like helmets and armor and weapons. And I wanted to make something that was kind of versatile, something that could be used for other applications. So there will be a nice base for this helmet. Then I wanted to combine it with something different, something odd, something you wouldn't expect. And from time to time, I get requested to make Mickey Mouse ears, you know, the, the little ones that typically you like buy in the park and wear around. And then that's like your keepsake that you got from the park. Um, why not combine those two things and make kind of a more manly-ish or more battle-worthy Mickey Mouse set of ears. Excuse me, generic mouse set of ears. So today we are going to build a mouse military helmet out of foam. Let's get to building. So I did a Google search of military helmets and was drawn to some of the more basic models, some that I could easily see being used for Call of Duty cosplay or Fallout or even the starting point for a sci-fi helmet. I think this is a M88 helmet, but I'm not really sure. I'm sure my military buffs out there could lend their expertise in the comments and correct me. I made it on my dummy head using foil and duct tape, then traced that onto some poster board to make it easier to read and stay flat, added some markings to help with the alignment and positioning, then traced it onto my foam. All the parts were made out of six millimeter foam except for the ear ridges which got 10 millimeter. Once the parts are traced, I put in a sharp blade on my hobby knife and began cutting it out. I like to cut them in more manageable chunks with the initial rough cut so I can move the pieces around as I go. A common question asked is how I get such clean edges. It really comes down to three factors. First, I have a really sharp blade. Either buy a bunch of spares or a knife sharpener to keep the blade at owie level. Foam dulls blades super quick. Number two, lock your wrist and try to pull through in as few passes as possible. If you start and stop or make a sawing motion, it'll show in the cut. Use the other hand on the foam to kind of help limit the amount of movement you have to do with the cutting hand. Number three, lots of practice. At this point, I have several thousands of hours of practice with the material. It's just like any other skill. With enough practice, it becomes second nature. For assembly, I like to lay my pattern out somewhere in view so I can see how parts align with each other. The template is for the left side of the helmet. The right side is the same pattern, just with the label side down. I contact cement all the edges, let them sit for a couple of minutes, then touch the edges together when they are no longer wet. Do your best to align the outside surfaces with each other to limit the amount of sanding you have to do later. Use the U-shaped marks on the edges to help you align the parts with corresponding pieces. The V-shaped cuts are called darts and they allow for the flat foam to curve when they're stuck together.
I like to glue up one side at a time so that the glue doesn't sit for too long. You may also notice that I have one solid piece for my brim. When I traced it out on the foam, I just drew it together as one piece. This will help to hold the front seam on the helmet base together. The brim is also the only part of this template with an angle cut. Green lines on my templates usually mean an outward 45 degree cut. That means to tilt your blade back and when you pull through the template on that line, the point of your blade should extend out further than the top of the blade that you're following with the line. Now, I could have rounded this piece over at the top before gluing, but I wanted it to meet right at the crease. Very carefully, I took off a good chunk with a sanding drum and made an even closer pass with a stone bit after bringing it right to that valley. This makes a better transition on the ear protrusion in the helmet. If you make any mistakes, just gouge out a big chunk of it and say it's battle damage later, or put a panel over it to hide it. From what I can see in my reference images, the helmet has like a covering that slides over the edge or it's like a rolled bead to kind of protect you from touching a sharp metal edge. I'm simply going to mimic that look by adding a 10 millimeter half dowel around the outside and round over the inside of the helmet with a rotary tool. I glue up both parts and work slowly around the perimeter making it as flush as possible. Keep in mind most of these clips are four to five times faster than they actually are. The helmet has an inside harness to help fit your head in properly and to hold this strapping in there are rivets clamping the nylon mesh to the metal. I am taking a 10 millimeter dowel rounding over the edges on one side and cutting off two or three millimeters from that end making a nice foam rivet. You could also use googly eyes, hot glue, real rivet heads or a number of other alternative items. Since there were not very many of them I'm just going to use foam. Super glue them into place when you are done shaping them and the helmet base is pretty much done. You could stop here to have a perfectly good military helmet foam replica. My mouse ears need a bit of shaping to make them more dimensional. I'm heating up this 10 millimeter foam with a heat gun on both sides and then pushing it over a round object to shape it. I use the glass dome off of my back porch light. There's a lot of different methods for doing this like pushing it into a bowl or even simply shaping it over your knee. Hold it on to the object as it cools and it'll maintain its concaved shape. Once done, mark the position on your helmet base and then glue the two pieces together. If you want a more traditional set of ears, you could use the ear pattern from this build and the cap base from my foam hat build I did a while back. I'll put links to it in the description below if you're interested.
Now on to the battle damage, one of my favorite things to do on props. This will help you to tell the story of the piece, show that it's lived in or at least a method to help you hide all the mistakes you've made on the build. Seems you couldn't close up are a great place to drag a rotary tool across to make scratches. I am using a round bit to make bullet dings. No real rhyme or reason to where or how many marks I'm making, just doing it until I'm happy with the amount of damage that my little mouse character here has seen. I also added a couple of repair panels out of some 2mm EVA foam. Patchwork together like this kind of made me think more along the lines of some Fallout armor. I looked at some images of bullet indentations on metal and decided that I needed an impact line around some of those areas to distort the edge. With some hot glue, I added a bit of random depth to the battle damage. I also went ahead and added some sloppy weld lines where the ears of my armor were joined to the helmet. Time for two coats of Plasti Dip to seal the foam. Follow it up with a light misting of silver spray paint for an aged metal look and then hit it with a clear coat to seal it. This silver will only be seen in the areas where the paint has chipped away. To make it seem a bit more believable and add a layer effect to my paint job, I need to mask off those areas. You could do it with tape, masking liquid, latex, or a number of other products. I like to use toothpaste for several reasons. It's pretty cheap, easily accessible, easy to brush off, and it makes your prop smell minty fresh when you are finished. Just glob it onto the battle damaged areas and come back with a brush to randomize the edges. Once done, I hit the helmet with some khaki camouflage spray paint. Just like brushing your teeth, it's time to scrub this helmet clean, or at least do our best at it. All the parts with the toothpaste are relatively easy to pick out. The paint doesn't adhere to those areas, causing cracks in the surface and a bit of distortion. Wet a toothbrush or a paper towel and scrub it off. It will reveal the silver layer underneath and have a nice chipped edge look to it.
To vary up my paint job a bit, I'm going to paint all my patched panels a brownish green mix, roughly. After that, I hit all my panel rivets with a silver paint pen. Even though he is greatly battle damaged at this point, I feel like the surfaces are still way too clean for what they should be, so time to water down a little bit of black and brown acrylic paint to sloppily wash and smear all over the helmet. Put it into the cracks, crevices, and anywhere where you think that dirt or grime would accumulate. I usually have to make three or four passes to get enough variations to the dirtiness that I want. My last step for the paint is to put finer scratch marks and hit the edges of the areas to bring out more contrast. I'm starting by adding some silver rub and buff to a chip brush and lightly dusting the edges with my bristles. Then I use the tip of my finger to put it down heavier on all of my hot glued areas to make them pop a little bit more. For the strapping, I did cheat a little bit. I used a helmet a while back in another build that had this nylon chin strap on it. I didn't need it at the time, so I cut it off and put it in a bin box to sit for a couple of years. As this project was coming down to the wire, I remembered seeing this bit recently and dug it out. You could easily throw this together with some banding, super glue, and a couple of buckles to make it adjustable. I super glued it to some two millimeter foam and sandwich the nylon in between it and the helmet. With that, the build is done. You could add some embellishments and markings if you would like to continue to add to the story of your piece. And we are finished. Here is the end result. Overall, not too difficult of a build. Definitely this base helmet, if you didn't wanna go as far as the putting ears on, wasn't too difficult. It definitely could be done in a couple of hours. Um, my wife had a pretty awesome idea, which was to make this even more so. Maybe make these into satellites so it seems like there's some kind of functionality, uh, but yeah. Maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to throw together two things that shouldn't belong together, but somehow kind of work. I mean, maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these, tell them much props. I mean, that's, 
I'm just gonna slide this on and uh, peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube, please consider helping the channel out by joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.